What's going on guys? In this video, I will be extending the wire harness in the IS300. And as you can see behind me, I'm kind of already about half the way through the, uh, through the project. I've, I've got all the wires separated as they go into the firewall. I'm gonna show how I do that later in the video. Um, I've got the wires all pulled out of the harness. Also, I'm gonna show that how I do that later in the video. And I spend a little bit of time showing how I ripped apart the donor harness, which is from a 2004, 2003 RAV4. So, I'm going to show all that later in the video and how I'm depinning these connectors so that I can slowly move these wires one by one like I've done here. These were wires that went in through the firewall. So I have depinned them and run them around outside of the car for now so that some of these connectors, I can just swing them around outside the, uh, outside the car into the interior because technically half of this harness is already extended now that I've moved these wires. I just have to leave my door open so that I don't pinch the wires. I, no, I don't think it'll harm them. But that's that. But the end result of this should be a really clean install. I am going through a little bit more work in doing it this way, but that is because I want the end result to be clean. I want the end result to be nice and something I can look at and say that, wow, that is really tidy. I'm getting rid of some of the extra wires that go in through the firewall instead of running new wires through the firewall and identifying which ones go to the fuse and relay box, which ones go to other parts of the car or that I don't have to extend so I can separate those and just focus on the ones that I want to extend. So stay tuned. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a blast, but not really. This is very time consuming and this is more on the upper echelon of complexity and a lot of people avoid wiring, but it's not that bad if you focus on one wire at a time, one pin at a time, soldering one connection at a time. It's just time consuming. Before I jump into this though, since I'm recording this after the fact, I do want to say, start here first. This is where all the wires go in through the firewall and basically Toyota glued about 50 wires together that after you cut this rubber grommet off, you have to separate those wires individually from the glue. It's very hard, it's very time consuming. It's, it took me a couple hours to, to just to, to cut away from that and start removing wires from the harness, but it took me I think about four or five hours altogether to remove all of the wires from themselves where they were all glued together. So if you are driving this car as a daily or you want to keep driving it for as long as you can before you start all of this rewire and everything, definitely start here first and make sure that uh, you have all of this done because this is probably the hardest part of the job. Make sure you have all those wires separated first and pulled out of the glue before you start pulling the ECU out and disconnecting the, the wires that go over here and making the car where it's undrivable because you could still drive it little by little while you're cutting into the harness over here. Just don't damage wires. I damaged one and it set me back about an hour with having to re-solder that wire in a very tight spot beside where my uh, clutch line goes down by the, um, by the master cylinder because I can't solder it underneath the dash because you're, it's, it's a very, 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 very tight area. So get a mask like I have over there. Do not start this unless you have some way to filter out the fumes because you don't want to breathe that stuff in. So yeah, so that's that. It's fun, right? Should be hopefully a two part video. All right, so this is actually probably the easiest part of the, uh, the harness extension and this will be cutting open this harness and the, it's easy but I have to take care that I don't slice open any wires or damage any wires because the wires are sealed to keep oxygen out of them so that they don't corrode whenever they're, uh, whenever they're made. So I don't want to nick any of these wires. I'm just going to take extra caution, cut the electrical tape off, save these looms because I'll probably be repurposing them. The ECU pins on the 2003 RAV4 are actually a little bit different than they are on the IS300. Now this bottom row on the IS300 is the exact same as these. These have like that upside down T shape thing. So you, you put a little probe tool inside of there and you pry up a plastic flap and you can slide the pin out of the back of the connector. So the ones of these that are the same color as the ones that go into the IS300 harness, whenever I pop these out, 
I'm going to use those and pop them out of this connector and into the IS300 connector so that I don't have to do a ton of soldering to, you know, I, I only had to solder the joint once like uh, the three, four feet down the line from this wire. So it's not going to be that bad. It's still going to be a little time consuming, but uh, where I will have to solder is where Toyota used on the IS300 connector, they used the smaller type of connector than this where it goes onto the ECU. So it's, it's two types of pins in one connector. So you have this type and then you have like a, a smaller type with a smaller wire. So there's differences in wiring. Hopefully I can still use this though because this is from an automatic. So there, I do have a few extra wires also that would be used for the automatic transmission. So it's, we'll see. It looks like it's going to, to work, but I'm going to start cutting this open carefully so I don't nick any wires. There's a little lock on the back of this that pries up and you don't want to pry it up like I did here. I don't care about this connector anymore, but I pried it up before with this little probe tool and that ends up bending these little pry spots. So you can end up breaking this pry spots off and then it's a little bit harder to pop that little locking mechanism up. But once that's up, you leave it up and then you can release these pins really easily. So I just find the one on the back that I want to release. I'll pull this white wire. Just to make it easier to release that plastic latch, I'm pushing in on the back side. And then I just, I just stick the needle in this hole here, and I want to pry up. You don't want to stick it in this one. This is the one that the electrical pin actually goes into that's from the ECU. So I'd rather not stick it in there because it ends up widening the pin on this side where it that goes on to the uh, to that other pin that's on the ECU. So I don't, you don't want to stick it in there because you risk widening that out. But this one, you can stick it in this one, pretty much pry down, and then pull out. And then it comes out. Go over to the next one, do the white with the red stripe. Same thing. Stick it in, pull it out. This black one, which was beside that white one. That's out. Yellow with the red stripe. That's out. Yellow with the green stripe. Which one, which hole was that? Is that this one? I think so. Yeah. So you can see, I can keep going down the line. Keep removing. It's really easy once you get the hang of it. If you're using something larger, like this probe tool, you end up widening the holes like I did on that one when I was moving one of the other pins. So you can still get this in there, not this one, this one's too oddly shaped. For my straight one, wherever it is, you can still get it in there and pry it, but you end up widening this plastic. If you don't care about the connector that much, it doesn't matter. You could still reuse this because this side doesn't really matter if it's been widened out. You just don't want it interfering with the hole like it did there. So if you widen it too much, then it kind of damages the hole, but now it has access to the hole because I just moved that little thing out of the way. There is a slightly smaller connector, which is this one. This is used in a different spot. This is just a little wire harness extension, but this one also has a little locking mechanism. So these are used on the IS300 ECU. Just a, they're just slightly different and they're in a different kind of connector, but it's the same concept. You pry up on the back, get this little door locked and up and as far as up as far up as it can go. You can pry up too much on this and then pull this whole locking thing out, but I don't think you can when these wires are in. So right now, even though the locking thing is up, I can't pull these wires out unless I take my needle and I do this. It's the same thing. It's because this is the hole that the electrical pin goes into, and this is the one that's made to remove that pin. So I'm just doing the same thing. Putting in, prying, and it released. Felt it release, but I snapped the latch. So it released and it came out, but I snapped the latch back down. So I locked it in place. Don't do that. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's out all the way. And I could remove more of these, but they're all the same color. So I'm going to put this back in, but you get the concept. It's, there's, and now it's locked back. I can't, uh, 
And in order to put these pins back in, you have to have this door up. You can't slide the pins in with the door down, this little locking mechanism. So it's got to stay. It's got to stay up. But you get the concept. It doesn't matter. This needle, you can buy the expensive tools that are made to remove pins. And I'm all about using the right tool for the right job. But when it comes to something like this, this is a needle. You can get a pack of 10 of these for like a dollar at your basic craft store that is in like every town in America and couple it with some little miniature vice grips and you have the tool that you need that's got a nice big grip and you can pretty much, if you break this, then get another needle. It's not that big of a deal. They're strong enough to where they're, they're gonna do what they're, what's asked of them when we're doing something like this. So you don't really have to worry about it. I'm gonna go down the line, keep popping these little pins out. So this is 75 to 80% of the RAV4 wire harness. This right here, this little bundle, this is about 45 wires. All of them are six feet, uh, at least six feet long. So there's a few more that are seven feet. And then these over here that I've laid out, those are five and a half, five to five and a half feet. If you're doing the same thing that I'm doing, you're extending your wire harness, then you should also think about, um, you should also think about this. Like these, these wires, a lot of these that were, that were exposed to a lot of engine heat, like this one, you can't really see it. I'm gonna, I'll try to zoom in a little bit, but this wire, as I bend it, the outside cover around the copper is actually cracking because this has been exposed to engine heat for too long and it's just the elements have gotten to it. But if you get about three or four inches down the wire, it's nice and bendy still like it's supposed to be. So you want to also factor that in, like as you're extending wires into the engine bay, you wanna pull some back, especially if you're replacing your connectors like I am. I've got this bag of connectors here that will be, um, yeah, like I've got this bag of connectors here that will be replacing all of the, um, all the ones that are on the IS 300. Popping the pins out of these is pretty simple. You either have like this little white cap that you can pop this cap off and then you can see in like above these, uh, these pins, you can see above it and you can see a little plastic tab that you could pry up, uh, just like in these or you can kind of look inside of this and you can see a plastic tab to pry up. So pop a little white cover off like there or there, or it could look like this and you have to pry up this little white insert on the inside, but either way, there will be a little white thing to pry up. And once you pry that up, you can uh, release the tab that's holding onto this and then you can pull it out. These have a little bit of a dust seal, so they're different from these and they're a little bit harder to pull out because these don't have the dust seal on the back because these are made to be on the interior or in some kind of other cover where these, they have a dust seal on the back. So at the wire loom on the IS-300, again, I'm, I'm cutting this whole plastic sheath off and it's all covered with electrical tape. Um, it's basically just a, a plastic sheath that wraps around all of, the, all of the wires that go around the wires that go all the way over here into the ECU box shield, I don't know, thing in the engine bay. So you can tell it seems together by looking at, I, I like looking for this kind of thing. So like where this little wire harness section comes out, this little pigtail comes out and it goes into this gray plug. That is where this, uh, that's where it seemed together. And you can't tell because it's all covered in electrical tape. And mine has this extra harness beside it. But I uh, basically removed these and I cut some of the other zip ties that were holding this. But this one, I just, I stuck a little probe in between the little flap on the zip tie section. It's like a factory zip tie thing so that I could pry it away and then push this through and release this so it gives me a little more room to work with. But if I'm looking at this pigtail here where it goes into the wire loom, it's, it's the easiest way to spot where the split is where it goes around because it's covered in electrical tape and looking at it, it looks like on the top, the split is right there because there's a groove right there, but I don't know what that groove is. It's just, I don't know. Um, it's kind of a weird groove thing that's in, the, that's in the sheath, but you don't cut that. Just run the razor blade along the side here if you want, or you can try to unwind all of this. But if you cut near this uh, fairly shallow, the electrical tape just breaks off and that's good. So I want to remove this completely and probably cut it down where it goes into that big grommet that goes through the firewall and then cut it down here uh, around where all this electrical tape joins that one together. These are probably two separate ones since there's a bunch of wires that go off this way. So one there, one long one here, and then one little one there. 
hopefully if I can I like to remove the plugs that go into the interior into the sections that they go to so I don't have to depen every connector I could pull that all through here lengthen the harness and then feed it back I don't know we'll see I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet but I'm just kind of just going by So this sheath, I was pretty rough with it and getting it off, but it's off now. And uh, the only thing that's left around this wire is this electrical tape here that's, I've got to go through and I've got to, I can either, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice it really carefully along the tape, but um, you can unwind it if you don't trust yourself with a razor blade that close to the wire. So I want to figure out where I want to extend these wires. Uh, what's the probably going to be the easiest working like right here in the middle and just making two solder connections instead of one. Next thing will be me cutting this off so I'm going to have to remove this, pull the ECU out and the boom sling harness that's here goes up. It's, it's in the way. It's very much in the way. I don't like the boom sling harness. And after I take this out I'll be able to expose all of these wires and then figure out what I'm going to leave here and what's, uh, what's going to be relocated to the interior. So getting this black plastic housing out is actually really easy. There's a nut in the front there. There's one on the back that's really buried in the, the, um, the back, I don't know, just look down on the back side of this box. And then there's one that bolts into kind of there on, the, um, on the, the wheel well. So there's that, and then you're able to pull it up. I loosened this harness before I took that back nut out. Just it's, There's like a clip that clips onto the, uh, to the uh, to the wheel well so did that and then once I pulled this up there is a big grommet there on the bottom so that big grommet <clears throat> so that big grommet I was able to push in the side put a screwdriver in there and then pry it down this has come out before though because somebody had to pull this out in order to install this whole boom sling harness so I don't think there was an extra nut or bolt on the inside of this box. It didn't look like it looking in there, but it's, it could be that someone took this out before and they didn't take a nut out. They didn't put a nut back on the inside whenever they put this all back in. So mine is going to be a little bit more complicated because I have to slide this boom sling harness out with everything else. But all of these connectors, uh, some of these are ECU. There is a grommet on the bottom here and it's really easy just to push in one side of this, put a screwdriver in, and then pry it down. And then this comes down. Uh, disconnect the ECU plugs. You won't have this unless somebody's installed a boom sling harness. If you don't know what a boom sling harness is, it, yeah, it allows you to plug in another ECU. Um, why that's needed is beside the point. So once these are disconnected, you can get this out of the way. Then you have to remove this block. So this, this was actually all of these connectors. Well, not these, these are ECU connectors, but all of these connectors fit into the top of it as it sat here. And all of these connectors that are down here on the bottom slid into it on the bottom. So you have to disconnect those. They're, they're kind of colored. Like it goes, um, I think blue, gray, white, is uh, blue gray white white I think is what it, what it did unless this one's ECU blue gray white something but um, yeah they only fit into one spot these disconnect from there's a little tab that's there and you pretty much just pry this tab up this sits there with this side facing the computer so you just pry this tab up and you pull the connector out of the bottom after this other side this other connector is pulled out of the top this is like a pass-through connector so there's a female connector that plugs in this side and there's a female connector that plugs in this side so it's just a male-to-male -male connector and then this blue one is like a jumper thing um, it connects all the grounds together it looks like so once this is out your wires are free enough to where you can slide them down to the bottom so that's what i'm going to do but i basically have to completely remove this boom sling harness and the plugs that are on it don't pull up on wires actually as you're uh, pulling the connectors out. Once all these connectors are out, it looks like I can just pull them out there through that grommet to that hole in the bottom. And then this whole box is out. And then I can work on cutting the rest of this harness to separate wires and 
do all of that stuff. I'm going to leave this harness section as much as I can. I'm going to leave it on the uh, on the car so that I have the wires all routed where I need them right now. And then, yeah, I, I'll move this harness up to uh, up to where I want it to go through the firewall. Oh, this is ridiculous. I hate the boom sling harness. I really do. This is such a pain. It's not even that great. There's so many problems with it just as it runs the car. But now I'm having a problem with just trying to remove it. But basically I have all these connectors out. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to stop the camera because I'm going to have to be walking around the tripod and stuff. I don't want to video all of this because it's unnecessary. This is, it's just ridiculous. Stupid boom sling harness is in the way. You can actually pop these back into the, uh, to the spots that they were. It was blue first. Yeah, blue first. And then it was gray. And then white. This I'm going to be cutting open the rest of the way. I'm going to remove this grommet completely off of the, uh, off of the wires. <laughs> All right, wires. So, um, I think I'm about a third of the way done and I'm going to walk through everything and the reasons why I think I'm about a third of the way done. First of all, if you don't have one of those masks, get one of those full face, um, masks that because you don't want to be breathing in solder fumes. If you're, um, well, it's flux actually that you're breathing in. You can't breathe in the solder, but you don't want to be breathing that stuff in. People get brain damage and whatever. Seriously don't. And then ignore the motorcycle helmet and jacket, even though I just clearly pointed it out. Um, still, um, ignore it because I said so coming over here. So you're wondering why I have wires going on the outside of the car. I'm going to explain that all will be revealed. Um, the wires, uh, I would suggest starting here first. If you're going to do this, I, I should have recorded this. Um, I should have started that in the recording whenever I started everything, but start cutting open these little pieces that go into the firewall, this rubber grommet that goes into the firewall because just like Toyota does with all their harnesses and the RAV4 one that I cut open earlier in this video, this little glue stuff is in the RAV4, it was black glue, but this one, it's like this little orange glue stuff. It holds all the wires together really tight so that they don't move. And it's a pain to get this rubber grommet one away from the, um, the firewall, but two to get it unstuck from the glue. That's just a nightmare, especially working in such a tiny area where you have the clutch line. If yours is a, a manual, if it's an automatic man, I, I'm kind of wishing I didn't have all this stuff there in mind. Um, in this case, it would be nice to have an automatic because I wouldn't have the pedal in the way and working under the dash and I wouldn't have this, um, beautiful clutch master cylinder and reservoir in the way. Uh, there's a bracket that's here that I removed that had the horn on it. It's just a couple 10 millimeter bolts. One is kind of like down there behind the strut tower. And I think there were two up here or something, but all of those were removed. And then that bracket came out of the way. So what I've been doing is now that those wires are exposed around where this rubber grommet was, I've been pulling them up out of the glue one by one. So the, the wire that I could see that goes through the glue, it's, the, it's only glued in about maybe two inches or so. I've been pulling it up out of the glue and then following that wire back here, all the way back here and seeing which one of these connectors that it went into. Did it go into an ECU connector or did it go into one of the little junction block uh, connectors? So I would pull the wire out of there just by deep pinning it. And I'm going to show in a second how I'm doing all of this because I've already pulled a wire out and I've already kind of deep pinned it. I just have to pull it out of the connector. I think it's this connector. And then, uh, go in the interior and pull it out and then run it around the outside of the car. The reason I'm running them around the outside of the car is because I am taking the wires that are long enough to go from the engine bay into the interior and then routing them back around here to the, um, to the engine bay so that whenever all the wires are moved over from this connector, then really it's going to be an extended wire harness that's long enough to come around back to the engine bay. Um, and it's just, it's easy to have the wires that are as they are in the engine bay. And since the wire is long enough to route around and through the door and everything, then you know, I just don't close the door all the way because I don't want to pinch the wires. So I have this fat vacuum cord that's going to my makeshift shop lights in the way of the door. It's also holding the door open so that I don't 
close it too far. So as I've been identifying those wires that either go up to the headlight or that go over across to the uh, fuse and relay box over there, I've been clipping them into a carabiner and you kind of can't see it now because it has so many wires, <laughs> it has so many wires in it. But my little carabiner down here, and you can see that. So, so yeah, I've, I've been, uh, as I find a wire, then I'll just slide it into the carabiner and that'll keep it separate and out of the way and I'll just focus on pulling the next wire out. So that way I'm at least organizing the, my few little wires that I won't be cutting, that I won't be extending because they either go to the fuse and relay box over there or they go to around the headlights or this little relay box that's buried under wires right now. So once I identify a wire, I'll mark on the back of it with my permanent marker. So that way I know that after I pull this wire out and I pull it through into the interior and then I route it back around the car, it's without a shadow of a doubt, that is the ex exact hole that I went back into on the, uh, the connector. Because some of these connectors, they don't have, there's, there's open pin slots and whatever. I don't want to put, I don't want to take a pin out of one spot and then put it in another spot whenever I put it back in this connector. So I just mark where I pulled it out of, pull the wire out, suck it through the interior. That's where it takes a little bit longer because it's only me doing this. I don't have anybody helping me. Unfortunately, if somebody were helping me, then I could have them hang out in the interior. And then whenever I tug a wire, then they could say, oh, I see it, you know, with excitement because why not? And then, you know, they would pull the wire through after I mark it and then I would route it around the things. So that's the basics of what I'm doing here. Now, why I'm doing it this way is so, I mean, yeah, I could run wires and everything to the engine harness and extend the actual car's engine harness. But if I do that, I'll have all these extra wires that are down there going through the firewall that aren't needed anymore and just kind of in the way. So this car is going to be custom enough that I pretty much have to get into this harness. And the end result of this is going to be really nice, really clean. So this is worth it to me. Digging into the wire harness, cutting open all that glue stuff. I'm going to seal it back later and just wrap it up really, really tight with electrical tape. I don't have glue to put around it, but... I'm going to wrap it up really tight with electrical tape and uh, yeah, but I'm about a third of the way through as I'm identifying wires that say whenever I pull one out of the glue down there, there's a lot of wires that go either over up to the headlights, under the headlights, whether they're going for the AC sensors or whether they're going to the radiator fans, whatever they're going to, there are about 20 wires that I've identified so far that are coming from here that are going over here and then just going to the headlights. There's about five or so that I, I've, I've identified that go into this relay box so far. I'm not done yet. And there's probably close to 30 wires that I've identified that go over. They come out of the firewall and they follow, they go through a separate wire loom that, that hugs the, um, the back of the firewall that go over to that fuse box that's in front of the battery. And those wires I'm not doing anything with right now. There are also obviously wires that come from each of these connectors that go over here and then also go over to the fuse box. I'm not addressing those yet. I'll be addressing those later and I'm probably gonna talk about those in the next part of the video whenever I start getting to those wires. But for now, I'm just pulling out the wires that come from these connectors and go through the firewall and then I'm wrapping those back around here. That's why there's only like 10 wires here. So I'm just, pulling those around there. So this is how I've been doing it really. Like I've been pulling out, I've already deep end this. And like I showed earlier in the video, you just pop up this little white plastic door thing that's on all of these types of connectors. They had that little white lock thing. So you just pry that up. And then inside of here, you pry the little plastic tab that's visible on the pin. And you pull this out. I've already marked this one. So you can see I've got a little black dot there where this pin is coming out. So I know that it goes back in that exact same spot. And then I really just start pulling it. I've already pulled this. This one's, this one's a, he's a big one. He is. This is a, this is a big wire. Um, so the other ones are smaller gauge. So they're a little bit easier to pull through, but come on. Okay. So that's that. This is where a second person would be really handy. So, yeah, and now I've already identified where it is in the interior. So coming over here to the other side of the wire mess, 
sure like all the OCD people are like yelling into a towel right now out of frustration because they're like, what are you doing? This is a nightmare. So where was that at? This was one that I moved before. So this was one black wire with a white stripe that's a heavy gauge. This is the other one. I've already identified it, but basically identifying it is just getting under here and looking for a wire that's that color and then tugging on it. There's tape that's wrapped around these, um, these wires that make it a little hard to pull it. So you have to get the tape off and I loosen this fuse box to help a little bit, but it doesn't really help that much with this. It seems like it hurts more with this fuse box loose. Still, like, whenever you loosen the bolt that's in the bottom of this fuse box and the one that's on the top, you have to slide it up out of whatever locks it in place. So you can leave it unbolted and just slide it up. And then, you know, if, it, if it's in the way, move it out of the way and then move it back into place and latch it back. But, um, yeah. wire is out this is that glue stuff that whenever you separate all the wires individually from where they go through the firewall that's that glue stuff it, and it's I'm gonna peel it off later but for now I'm just doing this and then I run it around it was the gray connector there's a gray connector and the spot where I have I'm gonna try to turn it where I can get the light so I'm holding my camera. You can see I have that black. I'll get out of the way. Yeah. And then snap. It's a very satisfying snap. And then I'm not pressing that white connector back down because I don't want to pry it up a million times. So I'm just leaving this. It's not going to come out if that white connector is in the up position because I still have to release that. But I've been doing that. So that was the 11th wire that goes through the interior that, but I've been doing that. So that's the 11th wire that goes through the firewall that now snakes around here. And once I finish doing all of these and moving these, I, I think I have probably about five left or so. I, I'm, I don't know, I, I'm guessing. So there's two connectors. These two connectors here, these are ECU connectors, and I actually don't have a tool to get into this, this little pin. So I don't want to cut and solder these, so these will be last. And what I'm hoping I can do is whenever that one and this one, this is the other ECU connector, all of these wires, with the exception of these three, so all of these wires that are coming off of this connector that I have in my hand, they all route over here and I've, set, I've pushed them off to the side, but they all bundle together and they go through the firewall through that same fat loom. So I've been slowly um, separating those out of the glue as I come across them and I'll just push it over to the side whenever I do. Whenever they're all out of the glue, then I can snip these three wires here, extend them into the engine bay, pull this whole section into the engine bay, and then it has these two power and two ground wires that come from this little um, connector. Once all these other wires are separated and pulled out and around, then hopefully, I mean, it, hopefully I'm not making it more complicated for myself, but I can pull these two connectors through the firewall because everything else will be disconnected from it. Cut what I have to and resolder what I have to, um, like regarding this one, because I can't take the pins out of this. So that's how I'm getting the wire out of the firewall and then running it outside of the car. It's really not that bad. The, I spent most of the time this morning, well, probably about an hour. I spent about an hour this morning cutting off that, that grommet to get to, to the wires. And I've slowly been doing this over the last uh, four hours or so, separating each wire and pulling it through the firewall, pulling it back around here, and then snapping it back into the connector that it came out of in the same spot that it came out of. And then after that, all I'll be doing is extending all of these wires slowly one by one from the engine section of the harness. So I can move this over to where it, instead of routes around, instead of where it routes around to this side of the, uh, the strut tower, I can move it to where it routes around the back side of the, of the strut tower. All these will end up going into the firewall. 
I know this is ridiculously overwhelming for a lot of people. I understand that. I don't mind wiring because I'm the type of person I tend to focus on one little thing at a time while still planning ahead for the, the rest of the stuff that I'm gonna do. But I, it's easy for me just to focus on one little thing at a time. So keep that in mind. Try to focus on one wire at a time. To keep this from getting confusing, you can take pictures of the back of this so that you can see all the wire colors and which, which uh, slot they go into on the back of this connector. And there are numbers, you can't see them. Even if I zoom in, you won't be able to see them. But there are tiny numbers that are under each one of these holes. Like on this connector, these are the female pins. So I don't have to explain why they're called female pins. Those are the female pins. And I can't zoom in close enough to show you. But if you look at the back of these, these are labeled right to left, topped to bottom. So this is pin one. This is pin two. Oh, man, well, that's not the right wire. This is pin one. This is pin two three, four, five. And then when I look at the bottom here, that's when the numbers start. And the number, this ties a tiny number there that says six that you can't see on the, on the video. And then there's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, I can barely see 13. No. Anyway, there's, there are numbers on here that show which wire this is in this connector. And on the opposite, so this connector this one, since it's the male connector, this is where all the fifth graders giggle, uh, you have left to right top to bottom because it's the opposite side of the connector. These don't go together, but if they were the, the right mating connectors, then this one is left to right top to bottom. So this one, pin one is on the top left, pin two is over here, three is over here, four is over here, five, and these, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, so they're, they're numbered. Some of these might not have a number on every one of the back of the connectors, like under each pin, but it would say like a five on one side. And this one says, I think a 13, 11. So it says 11 on this side. So you'll know that, okay, if this is five, then this is six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And there's also the part number for this connector, which it's, that doesn't have to do with the little individual pin slots. It just has to do with the connector itself. So with that understood, you can label each one of these wires like oh this one is this one is blue with a white stripe you can put the color on it if you want to if you're changing the color of the wire then yeah put the color on it so you know what color to to mate up with the other end but it's better to put the the pin number that it came out of on this connector especially if you're changing the color but i would advise against chasing changing the color of the wire that goes into this connector just in case you pull up the factory service manual and you look at the, where that connector what pin on that connector is what color. That way you're not confused in the future and trying to figure out what you did. Make it easier on yourself if you have to jump back into this harness by keeping these colors the same at least a few inches out behind the connector and soldering in a new spot. Unless you're lucky and whatever donor harness you're using has blue with the white stripe and you're able to use that one. So there's that. That's how, yeah. And then take pictures of the back of the connector so that you know which wires go into which spot. And just in case you end up removing all of the pins from one connector, you know exactly where to put them back in. And you can even draw out on a diagram, you know, something like something that looks like this, the back view of it as the wires go into it. I will say that the, the wire color that I've noticed throughout all Toyotas that I've worked on, uh, white with a black stripe is ground and regular brown is a sensor ground. So when you come across those, you'll know that they're joined together. Uh, this one, these are power wires for this. I think it's the same on the RAV4 harness, I don't remember, but I do know that these two, the white with the black stripe, these are both ground. And I wouldn't, even though they're both the same color, they have different functions. Uh, they could be ground switched by the ECU, not sure. So still, even though they're the same color, leave them in the same slot that they go into if you have to pull them out. So that's the basics on how you would do this. Label things, take pictures, draw out a diagram, whatever you have to do to make this simpler on yourself because this is not an easy task. This is more on the advanced, highly advanced side of, of, of things. So. You don't want to mess this up because you're going to take it to someone and try to get them to fix it and them trying to reverse the mistakes that you make are going to be very costly. So over document everything here as you're doing this. With that said, 
So these wires, so looking at this connector first, because a lot of these are strung together and I don't have to disconnect every one of the wires from these connectors whenever I pull them into the interior. I can, I can pull them in with a lot of these still connected because this one, as you can see, like this connector is moving. This wire goes from this connector to this connector and this white with a, that's no, not white. I'm, <laughs> I'm not colorblind, I'm, I'm serious. So, uh, what was it? I saw a white with a, these white with a black stripe. It goes into this bundle of wires here. So you can cut this, uh, cause this one just goes into a bundle. As long as you know that this wire goes back to this spot. And then this wire here is like kind of daisy chained and it goes over to this connector. So these four wires here, they go between these two connectors. I don't have to remove these. That's great because whenever I pull this connector through, this connector is going to come through after it. And then this, well, I'll, I'll cut that. But the other connectors that there's a blue wire here that goes over to this connector, I can leave that connected and I can pull everything through the firewall. So there's, there's those. I don't have to worry about those. This one goes forward into this this relay box over here. So I've got to extend that one. I have to extend a few other of these, but these three over here, I have to extend. So these three go under the headlight in that little section of harness that goes that way. So these three have to be extended. These blue ones with the white stripe, it looks like all of these come from this little fuse and relay box that's right here. So I've labeled these based off of the connector, like I was saying earlier, based off of the spot that they come out of on this connector. This is pin number one, because it's right to left, top to bottom. So this is pin number one, so I have labeled it as such, and also double check yourself, because if you make mistakes, then they could possibly be costly. This one, I don't have it labeled, because I've already extended this one, and I labeled it down here based off of where it goes. So pin number six. So if I count right to left, one, two, three, four, five, because there's five pins on the top row, and then six starts on the bottom. That's what this one is. So this one, whenever I run it through the firewall, I'm gonna connect it back there. I'm gonna do the same thing to these whenever I get more 16 gauge wire, because this is 16 gauge. I have to find it. I'm pretty sure I have some in the garage, but there's 16 gauge wire that goes up here. So I'll cut, uh, I'll cut this on this side because the pin's already labeled where it's supposed to go. I'll shave it, extend the wire, relabel the extension to pin number one, and then just pretty much get it ready to run it through the firewall. These three that are here that go forward, I don't have to worry about labeling these. These are the same color. I can just cut these right here and solder one long wire on this side, like, I don't know, four feet where four or five feet, whatever I want to do, and have that four or five foot section between these two sections of wire that I cut and separate. And do the same thing for this one and this one. And that's not bad. This would be done. This would be ready to pull through after these are cut. Again, this one, like I said, so this one goes over here. Uh, this is a mess. I've got to, there we go. This one goes here. So this one stays connected. This one goes to this connector. So this blue wire goes over here. That one I could probably leave connected. I'm not sure, but I know I can't disconnect it from this harness because these pins are, are weird. I would have to disconnect that one from this one and I could probably ride on it. Goes to 16 pin connector, pin number such and such, right? And then just write a little guide for yourself to figure out like, oh, this wire goes to this connector. Then I would do the same thing this one goes over here, so I could remove that one, and again, write on it which connector it goes to, and that one. This one goes over to this connector, write on it which one it goes to, same thing. And then this one, the connector that it goes to, this goes forward. This goes into this little relay box that's there, so that's some kind of a relay trigger, right? So I would, you know, write that that goes there, And that's, uh, that's it. So this one I would have to extend into the interior. So I'm basically going to start 
labeling these. And uh, I'm gonna time lapse all of that and then run them into the interior, solder them together, and then just show how easy this really is to, uh, to do that. It's just time consuming. So this one, I don't really have to, I just have to solder. I've already soldered this one. I just have to, uh, to heat shrink around it. So that's not, so that, that one will be done later. These two I've labeled so I can cut. And since I've labeled, this goes into pin one, I'm gonna double check. Pin seven, double check, that's pin seven. That's beside the one that I've already marked as pin number six. So I will cut these three. I can cut because I know where they are. I'll cut these all together. So this is now kind of separate. It just connects into this. And then following down the line, these two blue wires, I've got to disconnect them from this harness and then pull them out of this section of wire that they're into because these two blue wires go over to the fuse and relay box that's over there. So I wanna grab my little trusty needle thing. Now on this connector, it's actually, since all of these wires are full, whenever I take this one out of the connector, I don't really have to mark that that was a spot that I pulled it out of because there are no other pins that I could put it into. So that one goes over here. Let me double check that it does go where I think it goes. Yeah, so I can see the wire harness moving over there. That's out. And this one, I'm really just trying to get it completely free of all the wires before it goes into this section of harness. Now I can plop it back into this connector here, snap. Now I do the same thing for this one. I think it was this one. This bundle of ground wires will likely get cut and moved back there because half of the grounds go here and half of the grounds go there. But these, actually if you follow these, each one of these red wires goes into one of these other connectors. So the only place that I'll have to cut this is actually, I shouldn't have to cut it because this one I can fully separate all the way up. So this I can, I can pull through with all the other connectors. It'll just, it'll get hung on things just because of the shape that it is. But I don't have to cut these, these four that come out because this one comes from probably the fuse and relay block box over there. I'm gonna have to stop right here because my battery is about to die in the GoPro. Plus I want to post this video tonight. Next week's video, I am going to show all these wires as they're pulled through in the interior because this is almost ready to pull through. My battery wasn't about to die. This is almost ready to pull through. I just have to disconnect a few more wires. I have to, once I start soldering, I can just start soldering extensions on these to connect them to these three. We'll be extended to these three. And that's gonna be in the next video. So I'll pick up there next week's video. Uh, if you're watching this, you know, more than a week from now, then it's just, you can just click to the next video. But uh, that's gonna be part two, where I hopefully finish this, uh, this wire extension project.